ein ganz, ganz spannendes Thema. Und wir haben ein really sehr interessantes Thema, die Mapping of Surveillance Cameras. Martin, uh, der das Projekt Unsurf entwickelt hat. Der Talk ist von Martin, der das Projekt gemacht hat. And this is also about the test of face recognition in the train station in Berlin. And there was quite a lot of media coverage. And he's going to talk about the automatic uh, mapping of surveillance cameras. And now, Martin, take it away. Thanks. I would invite you to look at this picture. It's by the London Transport Agency. It's no satire. It has a 1984 look, but sadly it's no satire or advertisement. In the British, sometimes make it easy to talk about surveillance. Someone did a, a freedom of information request and the poster was designed by the Central Illustration Agency, which is seems like a department of the Ministry of Truth. If you need a cover for a dystopian book, it costs 2,000 pounds at the Central Illustration Agency. The Brits with surveillance are far ahead when it comes to surveillance. This post is almost 15 years old, I think, and slowly a video surveillance also became common hand in Germany and uh, for a uh, previous interior ministry and Seehofer have created this project in Berlin Südkreuz, the train station. It was from August 2018 till 2018. Three companies were involved. Uh, they surveyed the escalators and the entrance. The targets were, the test people were given Amazon gift cards as a reward. You needed to carry a Bluetooth beacon and a person. The Berlin Südkreuz is a S train station. And they tracked who was in the station. And the test persons have handed in uh, pictures in high quality. And they tried to find them through the cameras. And someone asked how this project was designed, and I would invite you to this, uh, read this uh, quote. It says more or less that the project was successful, successfully concluded, uh, independent of any success, actual measured success. And if you talk about these fundamental rights uh, violations to connect this with uh, camera surveillance if you don't even care about the uh, results whether this helps uh, police agencies as we've mentioned if you from 90,000 people talk about 90,000 people at the train station you would have at least a six, about 6,000 mistakes every day false alarms and you'd have to sort those out and I was quite angry I thought I try so to do something against it this was how what it looked like in the past if you didn't want it to get scanned you had to go on the left and if you were part of the project or you didn't care you could go on the right and this test project so you could circumvent it the British are ahead of us, like I did a lot of times. If you go, if you look at the surveillance cameras and where they are and map them, it says, see it, say it sorted at the check-in security. And you should report uh, whether you see someone who tries to map cameras and 
eine Alternative. In England fällt man da schon ein bisschen auf. So in Germany you at least have the determinate, but in England the, uh, you are suspicious. So in England you can't choose. If you want, if you don't want to be recorded into the face, you shouldn't complain. You shouldn't scream at the police, there's other options. If you know where the cameras are, it's mentioned in the reports, you could just simply turn to the side, either 15 degrees up or down, the uh, recognition rate is significantly lower there. The police have found a solution out of their perspective. You should uh, advertisement and, uh, and signs in this direction so that you can better recognize the people. So you can turn away. In Mainz, people complained that people walk down the stairs and that they move a lot and that's not that good for facial recognition. But if you want to turn away or prevent that you are being recorded, then you need to know where the cameras are. And this is the project. Now, to summarize, he gave us the data into the into your personal ID that are misused. Nothing stays on the ID card. All police agencies are allowed to look at the data on the ID card. And his idea was uh, we should turn away. We walk down the stairs. We have masks, hopefully. And on the right, this is a blanket with a certain pattern that gives a lot of uh, that um, mis makes the system misfire. And you can recognize 30 faces on a single person, but it's some form of a countermeasure. And you can look at the talk at 30C3. These were the problems. Our problems are more uh, simple. If we want to look where the cameras are and we want to find them, they look almost the same. A gray box with a lens. Or uh, if we talk, uh, we always look at the same thing. And only the, so if they look at us, only the background is different. At the pole, at the, uh, behind trees, at the roof. Well, now we know what we have to look for, and we need a database. OpenStreetMap is an option for this. I'm not really well versed in that. There are several nodes and you can put them together to describe a house or a parking spot. On the left is a very uh, popular open street editor and these separate nodes make up a building. If you use them separately, they can uh, put up a separate object. There's this project man-made surveillance and as you can see on the right, which properties it has. And you can see an interesting project, surveillance under surveillance. This data from surveillance cameras are in OpenStreetMap, but most maps aren't rendering them. And Open Surveillance does that for you. This, for example, is the Hamburg, inner city of Hamburg, uh, the main train station. This is what it looks like. These circles show uh, the range of the cameras. It's different, uh, difficult at the train station if you have several uh, levels. And that's why it overlaps a little bit. It's an interesting project. You can look at it under this URL up here. This is the cameras are uh, according to 
several countries. You can see Germany, France, USA. USA has 11,300 cameras. There's probably a lot more, but nobody inputted them into the database of OpenStreetMap. So there's a lot to do still, and that's what I try to do. Now let's talk to about time, split according to time. This is for Berlin. You can see 2012, there has been a spike. This is just an estimation. And you can see that the data can be very fairly old. There's also an API. You can read the data, and I'm also using them if I need them. Overpass API, there's documentation in the OpenStreetMap wiki. There's also Overpass Turbo. It visualizes the results. You can get, uh, get them as a JSON or an XML, depending on what you need for private projects. The API is public and can do a couple of requests a day. Now we have an idea where we want to store the data, but let's get to the main part of the project that collects the data. Oh, and there are three options. You can do it manually. You can do use uh, Vespucci, which is an editor uh, for Android phones. You can create the cameras on the map and insert the individual uh, values like angle, direction, and so on. And these, this data will later be shown. And now we come to the part of the project that is shown in the center which is the Android app that I have developed, which includes a self-trained object recognition uh, based on TensorFlow. This is all based on the TensorFlow example app from 2018 or 2019. And the central part of this app is self-trained object recognition based on the uh, material that I've collected over time. So basically, I would be the person who would be accused of doing shady things by the Brits taking photos of cameras at the train stations. Um, and then I'm also Yes. AI beschleuniger dazu gleich mehr. jetzt möchte ich euch kurz I want to show you a demo. This is the Android app. Man muss so ein bisschen in die Kamera entlang gehen. You have to walk alongside the camera uh, along the the camera. It determines the position of the mobile phone and determines thereby the position of the camera. It tries to determine the type of camera. And there's also the option to do it manually or to change the position if it didn't work. 100% correctly. You can. You can. You can. Practice training builder for me. You you can create training images. And in an earlier version of the app, you could also upload them. And this improves the object recognition. You can some bit filter. And you can filter based on camera types.
das Ganze basiert eben auf dieser Objekterkennung. And this is all based on object recognition. Das ist die neuere, der neuere Editor, den ich eingebaut habe. Ihr könnt da direkt This is the newer editor that I have included. Eigenschaften dieser Notes einstellen, wie Direction, welchen, welcher Typ Kamera ist. And you can adjust the individual types, direction, angles, um, and which zones being surveilled. Später könnt ihr das Ganze in einer schönen CSV-Datei aus der App exportieren und dann in eurem... And later you can export all the data as a CSV-File and import it into an OpenStreet-Editor. All meine, oder fast alle Teile dieses Projekts funktionieren eigentlich ohne irgendeine aktive Verbindung, das heißt, ihr braucht kein Internet. And all of these parts of the project work without an Internet connection. Die Objekterkennung läuft auf dem Handy. The object recognition is running on the phone. And you can download the OpenStreetMap um, data uh, and save it on the phone so that the entire mapping and screening can happen without an internet connection. If you don't want to um, create any mobile phone location data while you're doing this. So it's, it might be better to not leave any digital traces, even though you're not, not doing anything evil. I also included support for group activities. So basically you can say, The first person should do this quadrant and the second person should do this quadrant so that you can split up the work. And then you can meet at the end of the day and share the data and upload it. So a shutz that man gemeinsam am Abend hochlädt und nicht jeder einzeln auf dem Weg. And yeah, so it's also a bit of a protection if um, not everyone individually uploads things, but you have only uploads the data at the end of the day in a cafe. Also, if you, if the software is not recognizing a camera, you can also take a photo, export it, and potentially send it to me. The other part of the project is the 360 degrees camera which is semi-professional hardware. It's about 300 euros. The next component is the Coral Deathboard Mini, which has a TPU, so a tensor processing unit, which is useful for doing machine learning and you can basically compile your programs for object recognition for this device and then you can run all of this offline without internet access and you can mount the camera on, on a helmet and then use your um, e-scooter or whatever device, you, uh, vehicle you want, you can travel through the city and try to capture cameras. And the red, two red parts at the top, they help you to find the position. This is what the app in, on Android does anyway, but but in this case, it's without the risk of anyone else logging where you are. And these are connected through different pins with a GPS board and it locks when a photo is being taken of the cameras. And the idea behind that is you get these 360 degrees photos with those two fish eye lenses. 
sagt man, da sieht man hier schön im Dach, das Dach ist in Wirklichkeit. And you see, see the roof. Of course, it's not that round in reality. And that's why you have to do some image editing before you can start the object recognition. Alle paar, alle 45 Grad oder alle 60 Grad in verschiedenen Abständen, um halt möglichst viel. Uh, And das, das Bild ist all 45 or 60 degrees, you have to cut out images and walk them back into the original shape. I will show you a bit, show you this a bit quicker. And now you see that the roof becomes straight, and then you also see the camera. And each ja, yeah, each image is being processed by the DevBot Mini, which has a really nice co-processor. This is a mobile net V1. It takes about 25-26 milliseconds to process an image. So you get roughly 40 frames per second with this camera to process all these images. But what costs time is uh, the splitting of the images and transforming of the pictures. Because the, we only have small CPUs cores with not so many gigahertz. This is something that could be improved. This project I have only worked on until this uh, prototype, but in recent times I have not found that much time to work on this further. Um, we have the uh, possibility to get the data stored in OpenStreetMap and yeah, we müssen noch was mit den Daten machen. Now we also have to do something with the data. And I have developed the following. This is a PCB with an E32. Es yeah, with an ESP32. And a GPS chip. Which can determine the position. It takes a couple of minutes to until it finds the position based on the satellites, and with just a few min meters of accuracy, it gives you the position. You can use a, a battery, and you can also make it go to sleep if you don't move it a lot. And the nicest thing is the dynamic NFC tech, which is which are these two golden parts that connect to the antenna. Yeah. Yeah. The NFC chip is interesting. You can provide a string into the function and yeah, analyze the data and read the NFC tag. The camera position is stored on the SD card and compares the position with the position of, of cameras in your surroundings. You have to load them onto the SD card, but then the device works without uh, an active connection and just with this near field communication, just with your phone to talk to this device. I'll show you once again a video. This is the movement uh, activation. If the GPS module has a satellite, only needs uh, 10 seconds to reconnect. To the tag is you can see how it builds how it's built up. 
you can communicate all kinds of things. And if you have at the end of the day the device, it gives you a surveillance report, a kind of surveillance report. It shows your position and all the cameras in this area and which cameras might have seen you on OpenSpeed app. You can click at them. And uh, one, this is once again on Android. And you can show which uh, angle the cameras have if the data is correctly entered into OpenStreetMap. You can download the cameras in the area directly from OpenStreetMap. Oops. Here, once again, more screenshots. I've waited for the bus on the left side on the main, at the main train station in Mainz. And on the right side, I was in the bus. It even worked. So it, it, it's not really helpful to have a GPS within a large metal box. But yeah. This is almost it. These are the two parts of the project. There's some more. I have a, a browser, in-browser validation software. If you have been gone mapping, it exports a ZSV file, and in the browser you can validate that. It checks which data is already existent, and if not, you can approve and it's exported again and you can input it into the OpenStreetMap editor and the backend where you can upload the training data I don't have that in action anymore because I have more focus as a group to uh, map to export and to upload it jointly with one account that's what I focused on and now a couple of questions to you or requests to you what, how you can help if you have access to 360 degree scanners scans lots of cities as private car needs to drive through cities to help whether the whether they need to check the building department can use the 360 degree scans even with a laser distance meter and uh, this company can go through the city with a car berlin for example has done that one company is doing that you can look it up at with through a Freedom of Information Act, and there's uh, some contracts you can might ask for. So the data isn't only mostly only available for internal use, but if you work into a data protection agency, if they have an interest to map surveillance cameras, you could you might suggest to have that data, access to that data, I would think they could get uh, access if they would want to. You can still uh, pay attention to cameras and input them into OpenStreetMap. I can work with that and everyone else who wants to do that. If you're interested, I'll try with others, with other organizations like reclaim your face this summer I'll do mapping parties if that's possible so uh, without an infection risk if that's given you can uh, follow reclaim of your face on Twitter if you want to do printed circuit board design, you can look at that maybe if you want to and tell me what I did wrong.
wenn ihr Zugriff, wenn ihr im Event Management seid oder if you are in the area of event management or other and have access to a professional 360 degree camera that would be interesting to put it onto a, the roof of a car and try how it works and make a couple rounds through a city and look and analyze the data afterwards and do other things also for open street map this is these are the ways you could help me and you could also look at the things on GitHub that I've used for my presentation. On Vimeo, you can look at all the demonstration videos. There's also more current uh, demonstrations for the current versions of the Android app. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to have updates to this project or want to know where the mapping parties take place. If you look for, you can see this as crowdfunding, you can look at this board again. And if you have questions, I'm here. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for this nice, very technical talk. And I'm always happy to join these. We have some questions from the audience. And I would like to start with them. You said that stopped with uh, uploading of tra with with allowing with al allowing uploads of training data and did did you look at the uploaded training data how do you ensure that people didn't upload cat pictures i thought about that i thought um, on the server that does the upload there's in the object recognition there's differences in the performance the object recognition on your phone or the performance differences you can see them in the accuracy and on the server i would have a higher performance uh, object recognition uh, or a classification of the picture and I would have tried whether someone uploads a cat or uh, videos and the things that this object recognition would have rec been recognized as not, a cam not being a camera, I would have looked at that. And I would, if, but if someone who had uploaded cat pictures, then I would have just looked at those. Is the Unsurf app available on F-Droid? And is it also possible to run it without extra hardware? Without extra hardware, yes. With F, it's not on F-Droid, it's not on Google Play. This project uh, app that I built, I would. I probably would uh, rebuild the app entirely because the object recognition and the ma machine learning APIs have changed. They have a bit become more simple in the last three years. I used the example app and I threw everything out that I didn't need and put my own material in. But now the TensorFlow APIs are, have become a lot simpler. And for out of complexity reason, I probably would do it completely again, rebuild it completely again. And I would put it on regular Android. And you can also build it yourself from GitHub. That's also a possibility. Did you try to use public images, for example, photos, uh, with position data that is being uploaded to Google, especially Google Street View, or maybe pictures from other social networks, because there are already many of those 360 degrees pictures, and these often are with location data. I looked at Google Street View, definitely, 
In the Google Server API, uh, they only have small resol uh, low resolution, and the efficiency efficiency is not there for my own use case. The license, you cannot use it without approval of Google. Google has all the data in higher quality, but they limit the public access. I think, I don't know how it works with user uploaded uh, 360 degree pictures, what license they are using, whether it's determined by user or, uh, or by Google. The 360-degree images, I didn't look at them, but I think that those are more about a nice views and not about the inner city or, f or maybe a little bit about the train station, but I'm not really s uh, sure whether they are really relevant for surveillance data, uh, surveillance cameras to find the position of those. but. Uh, I'm, it might be worth looking into that uh, about the licensing and and I'll probably do that. Yes, there are many different image sources. Yeah, that's a good att attempt to use that and analyze that. That's a good idea. Um, do we uh, so the EF, IFG requests um, do we actually get any information about the duration of storage of data the most are in the area of train stations and I think they are marked as such there in the but in private areas of uh, restaurants uh, they might surveil their own area but those are also mostly labeled properly but private uh, there's a lot of private use that's not uh, properly labeled and the second question was uh, about the storage duration. You can see the contracts, they are censored a lot of times. I didn't do any freedom of information requests, but the storage duration should be mentioned. They say that uh, faces and license plates are uh, censored before they are published, before but if you want you can if you do a lot of work then probably you might find the people that are in that you are targeting but I think the protection is in place storage date uh, storage duration should be in the contracts you should find it out and there was there were questions about the links. Yes. And where can we get the OpenStreetMap data and also the tools? So where can you get the stuff? So you can get everything at, from GitHub. GitHub. All parts of the project. This is the Overpass API. You should look into the documentation into the o of OpenStreetMap. It's well documented, and you can. And the tag that you're looking for is man-made surveillance. It should be on. You can look at it on OpenStreetMap. Man, lowercase, uh, made surveillance. I didn't put include them in the slides, but you can find them there. The data. And I think the so, uh, project surveillance under surveillance also explains it really well how they extract the data. Okay. Just simply ask me again if you have problems. That's not an issue. The, the website is unserve.org. Yeah, that's right. It's not that nice, but you can look at it. Yeah, or you just start with GitHub. This is the more important part. Another question. 
Chat, äh, ein, Beteil äh, ein Fragesteller hat die Erfahrung gemacht, dass Kameras nur zur Glatteiserkennung verwendet werden. Some, uh, someone asks uh, what about uh, frozen, so frozen streets recognition, that cameras are only used for frozen street recognition. Is this something that you also encountered? That, so have you found some cases where the reason for the surveillance was really, really specific like that? I think uh, with traffic, you have that in certain cases, if you just want to count cars and not just anything else, I, ice rec uh, surface ice recognition, I didn't see that. But it's probably not the worst use case. Well, you can uh, direct the camera straight to, onto the ground and then you won't even see anything else. So that wouldn't surveil public space. So this is a really interesting uh, application. Okay, thanks. What can you do, do with the data? Uh, so what what use what uses can you make with the data besides evading the cameras? I thought of a research direction. A group of people that are representative of the population, you can split them the way you want according to income, whatever, that you could put these trackers into their pockets and just look who would be affected by surveillance measures disproportionately over affected and you can imagine what the results would be so you could uh, think about that whether currently it, the situ political situation is good i have uh, hopes that uh, biometric uh, surveillance wouldn't be discussed your uh, europe wide uh, and that can change of course any time but if this would be rolled out everywhere you could think about some routing and input how much cameras you want to see on your routes more or less with a slider whether you want to see more or less and i would build such a routing service to have a possibility to be caught by as few cameras as possible and uh, this might be really complicated to do that but it's also a possibility that we could do but i have not uh, done that now until now up to now but it's still uh, discussed another question from the audience and also a remark really nice project and I'm really looking forward to the mappings, is a summer of mapping. Gladly, if you want to take part. Uh, usually, we do this locally. We have a small open street map communities that are responsible. Also, that the, the local CCC organizations, there are probably also a good contact point uh, where, what they say and then we could meet that would be great the hardware tracker uh, so you can also get the hardware tracker through how crowdfunding right you can find this on the web page or on twitter or if you google unsurf many thanks those were all the questions from the audience. And I think we should now proceed to the extended Q&A. And many thanks again. Thank you for your attention. Also for